While Randy Couture was fighting the top fighters in the UFC, a rival international organization, Pride, was gaining a lot of attention with their phenomenal athletes and no-holds-barred fight rules. Russian heavyweight Fedor Melianenko had made a name for himself with a near-perfect record. With Emelianenko on a 22-fight win streak, Randy put the word out he wanted that fight. Hoping UFC would secure the fight, Randy came out of retirement. And while different organizations courted Fedor to fight in the U.S., Randy's next chance to fight came against UFC heavyweight champion Tim the Maniac Sylvia. They were looking for an opponent for Tim, and I'd made some offhanded comments to Dana, goofing around, texting him and stuff, and he, you know, he called me up. He's like, no, really, we, you know, we, wanna, we want you to fight Tim. Him being one of the biggest heavyweights in the division, you know, made, made that kind of old David Goliath thing come to life. Well, he cuts weight to make 265, so he wow. walks around at 280, 285. I walk around at about 225. I jumped on the opportunity to get right back into a title fight. Randy Couture was not only 60 pounds lighter than Sylvia, he was 13 years older, 7 inches shorter. But none of this phased Randy. I would love to be able to say, you know, yes, you know, there's no problem, anything like that. But I mean, Tim has obviously been able to get where he's at with, with the, the, the power and the strength that he has, you know. And he's been very, very successful at that. So. You know, as far as being Randy being able to get by him, I wouldn't. I wouldn't look too far past him. <laughs> but you know, I would just make sure. You know, as far as Randy goes, I'm like, you know, I think he's got the skills to do it. I think he does. Can't see the daylight if you try to look past Tim. He's a big guy. So uh, you know, I'll, I'll take Tim on, and, and again, try and honestly evaluate if I've met the benchmarks I've set for myself, both in training and in competition, and, and go from there and see what happens. Uh, people ask me, is, does he seem like he's a 43-year-old you know, guy fighting, you know, still trying to hold on or anything like that? Not, not even close. The age question's been one that, that I've dealt with almost from the beginning in my right. career, and most people think, oh, he's done, he should retire, he's too old, and they start scrutinizing and evaluating you. And yeah. Most people think it's crazy for guys in their 20s, right. let alone a guy who's 44. It's been a challenge First of all, climbing back up into competitive shape and you know, still not up in, in top shape where I need to be. And I think that coupled with dealing with the big guys with the heavy, heavier weight and the size difference uh, has been a real challenge. Uh, the first few weeks were miserable, frankly, uh, but it just kept plugging away and, and I've come out the other side and I'm feeling very, very good right now. People in general, and, and athletes especially, tend to tell you what they don't want to happen. I don't want to do this, and I don't want him to do that, and, and they put everything in a negative frame. And uh, when you focus on those negatives, that's generally what happens. He's looking great, like always, man. I mean, he's doing the plyometric workouts, he's doing takedowns, techniques. Uh, hard sparring with 10 to 15 guys, crazy guys, bigger guys, guys that can mimic Tim Sylvia pretty well. We don't want to lose so badly, it's fear of failure that athletes deal with on a regular basis. If the worst thing that ever happened to me in my life was I lost a fight, I'm doing pretty damn good. Yeah. Do I want to lose? No, absolutely not, and I work pretty hard not to, but it could happen, it does happen, so, and it's not the end of the world. So all the people, like my wife and everybody else who still care about me, are still going to be here. It's not going to change anything. So uh, I think that frees me up in a lot of ways to just smile, relax, mm -hmm. enjoy what I do. On March 3rd, 2007, Randy fought Tim Sylvia. 
Once again, the critics had written him off as the underdog. But within seconds, Randy sent Tim to the mat with a stinging right, proving to the crowd that he belonged in that cage. He continued to amaze the crowd for the next five rounds by dominating the much larger heavyweight champion. Randy's victory made him the first man to win the UFC heavyweight title three times. It ended up being a great fight for me. I think you know, at 43 years old, nobody thought I could get back in there or thought I should, and yes. especially against the biggest guy in the division. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so again, I think as an underdog and kind of the, all the naysayers, it makes for a pretty special night when you come out on top and in dominant fashion. Well, uh, I've had a few of those moments where no one expected me to win, and, and I managed to come through, and, and that was certainly a, a good night for me. You know, Tim's a big, strong guy, and he's, he's a friend, and it was a, it was a great fight, and, and uh, 19,000 crazy people in, in the Midwest, it was, it was something special for sure. During his short-lived retirement, Randy pursued other interests. He continued work in TV and film, created a foundation for wounded American soldiers, and launched a clothing line and a nutrition company. When he returned to fighting with Kim's support, he also built a massive gym where he and his fellow fighters could train. This is uh, the best gym here in Vegas, no? Yeah. And he's, he's uh, is a very nice guy. He opened the gym for me and my, and my coach. And uh, he gave it support to me with the heavy cage, heavy ring, heavy spa. In the ring and outside the ring, he is the example for me and another fighter. Yeah, we built the gym for the pros. We built it for Randy and, and his guys. It's his toy room. <laughs> We've got a great group of guys here from top to bottom. We're kind of floating around and from gym to gym, trying to carve out space and time to work out. And having built gyms before, uh, it was just something that I wanted to do. I thought it would be very successful. This is kind of the center of yeah. mixed martial arts. I kind of wanted to create this a little different in that I uh, wanted to create one roof where you can come get your Muay Thai, get your Jiu Jitsu, get your wrestling, get your boxing, all the pieces of MMA and that puzzle. And plus, I figured it, you know, if you build it, they will come kind of, Absolutely. the best fighters would want to kind of come here and, and rub elbows and challenge each other. And uh, we seem to attract like-minded individuals that uh, aren't, you know, Terrib terribly egotistical, they work hard, they take care of each other, but they push each other to the max. You guys got guys like Forrest Griffin, uh, you know, Tyson Griffin, uh, Gray Maynard, Mike Pyle, Jay Haran, uh, Kendall Grove, you know, right, right on down the list. Yep. Frank Trigg, uh, Vanderlei Silva is now training here for his fight with Chuck right now. Uh, there's a, a lot of great fighters and I think it's good for everybody. You know, you're only as good as your workout partners. That's always kind of been my motto. A lot of those same guys teach the classes here. So the, the average guy that's into mixed martial arts and wants to do some training can come here. Doesn't have to worry about getting beat up. He's gonna be learning and rubbing elbows with some of the best fighters in the world and solid technique and the discipline and all those things that come with it. I run the pro training. Uh, any the, anybody here that's a pro fighter that's uh, fighting in the UFC or WEC or um, any major organization, that's, you know, I mean, I'm in charge of making sure they're ready for the fight. Randy and I have both been in the business for a long time, and uh, Randy, you know, obviously trying to, to branch out and learn more about striking, um, kind of came to me and asked me if I would be interested in, in helping him out, and in, um, in doing so, um, we became good friends, and uh, he built this home for us, and uh, it just made sense for me to move here and to work with his fighters as well as mine. This is a great gym because there is no king of the gym where you go in and you always have a good day. Everybody gets beat up out here. I mean, yeah. from Randy to Forrest Griffin, uh, you know, whoever comes in here has a bad day. And it kind of keeps you, you know, just when you think you, I'm all that, it kind of puts yeah, put you right back into place. Randy was determined to defend his heavyweight title. So much so, he handpicked his training partners to mimic the fighting style of his next opponent. Even though he had taken the title from Tim Sylvia, Randy was still the underdog. For Randy's next title defense, the UFC chose Gabriel Gonzaga. 28-year-old Gonzaga had a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and was undefeated in the UFC. Well, I think he's a well-rounded fighter. He's got a lot of great skills. 
I think his strength is still his ground game, his, his submission ability. Having recently beaten the most feared pride fighter Mirko Krokop at his own game, Gonzaga was favored heavily to win. The way he controlled Krokop on the ground, set up with his elbows, and I think that's where he really hurt Krokop. When they stood up, Krokop was in trouble, and that's when the kick came off. Gabriel did knock out Krokop pretty convincingly.